The reason I think it's easier to tilt the x here is because then uh, it's easy to find the, the x component of this is going to be t cos 62 is going to be the x, and the t sin 62 is going to be the y, right? If I hadn't tilted the x and the y, I would need to add this angle to this little angle right here, this little piece, which is 5 degrees, right? This little piece is 5. Then I would have to say 5 plus 62 is 67. Then I would have to do it in terms of that. So it's, it's easier, I think, if I tilt the x and y. So then I'm going to have here t2, some of the forces in the x direction is 0. So t2 cos 60, cos 62 is to the right. t1 sine theta is to the left, up the ruler. So minus t1 sine uh, cos theta. So this is... This is T1 cos theta right here, this way. This one is this way. And then how about this one? Do they have an x and y component? Yes. Just like inclined plane problem, right? They have a component like this and down. A component like this and down. Just like, in, just like inclined plane, you have like this. You have a block. You tilt the x and the y. You have mg. This is mg cos, and then this is mg sine. So you should know that by now. That's your bread and butter inclined plane problem, right? mg sine. So um, now this angle here is 85. So what's this little angle? That's 5, right? So that 5 is the same thing as the theta over there. Right, this theta, this theta, this theta is that theta, and that theta is the five degrees, not the eighty-five degrees. Right? So in the x direction, you're gonna have this and this in the positive x direction, right? They're down the uh, the ruler. So this, this is positive, this is positive. The only negative x is this one. Right? So we have T2 cos 62 minus T1 cos theta minus 1.25 times sine of 5, no, sorry, plus uh, 1.25 sine of 5 degrees, that's down the ruler, plus 0.686 sine of 5, plus 0.686 sine of 5. So the sum of all these forces must equal 0 in order for this thing to be at equilibrium. So we've got here, uh, well, basically, this is just going to give us some number. T2 cos 62 minus T1 cos theta is going to equal, uh, you can take this to the other side and get some number out of that. And then we're going to do the forces in the y direction. So this is going to go to the right, and this is going to go to the right, and you're going to get both negatives. Okay. What is that negative? 1 point. Point 0.169. Or, uh, point. So that's all we could do with that because we have three unknowns here. So we can't do anything else. So we'll keep this like this. Then we have uh, the y equation. We have T2 sine of 62 
plus T1 sine of theta. And then the Y of the two uh, forces, this is negative. So the Y of this is positive. The Y of this is positive. And then these two are negative. So we have uh, minus 1.25 cosine of 5 degrees minus 0.686 cosine of 5 degrees is equal to 0. So you take this to the right side again and then you get another equation. Is equal to, so this is going to be my second equation. So now uh, go 1.25 cos 5 plus 0.686 cos 5. No, this one's going to be plus because when they go there, 1.93. So that's my second equation. Again, there's three unknowns here. And then we can have uh, the torque equation. Now, with the torque one, you are allowed, you have pretty much freedom in how you approach it. Because you can do the torque about any point. And you can set the torques about any point equal to zero. Now, what's the best point to choose here? I mean, I could choose basically any point along this ruler. And I can say the torques about any point is zero. I can choose this point. I could choose this point, this point, this point, this point. I could choose that point right there, right? I could choose that point. I could choose this point. I could choose an arbitrary point here. I could choose this point. I could choose this point. I could choose this point. And I could choose any other arbitrary point. And the equation will still work. But there's the one point that's the best point to choose. The point, the best point to choose is the point where our where there are the most number of unknowns, OK? That makes it the easiest. Why? If there's the most number of unknowns at that point, then the torques due to that force are 0 at that point, you see? Because remember, torque depends on the uh, R, R crossed into F, you see? So the torque, if I choose this as my point, the torque of the tension T1 about that point is already 0, so I don't need to know the theta. So it eliminates that. So I'm going to choose that point. So it looks like this now. I'm going to choose this as my point. So I'm going to have uh, this one here, F1. I'm going to have this one here, Mg. Then I'm going to have this one here, uh, which was what? T2. And then this was 62. Right? So which two, which two torques are in the same direction? So this thing is trying to make it go down. It's into the board. This one into the board. This one out of the board. So these two forces are trying to make the object rotate this way. This force is trying to make the object rotate this way. So the, this torque must be balanced by this torque, right? So in order to do this, you say R times, so R1 times F1 times sine of this angle, right? RF sine of theta. So remember, the magnitude of torque is RF sine of theta. When, when we say sine of theta, we mean this theta. Or you could actually do this theta, because sine of an angle is equal to its sine of its supplementary angle. It doesn't matter if you take that angle or that angle. Sine of that or that. So we need R1, F1, sine of that. Then we need R2 times uh, Mg times sine of that angle. So what is that angle right there? Well, we, we know it's 85, right? So what's this distance here? Okay. 